Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a rational function. 1 over 1 plus cosine x. We have dx over 1 plus cosine x and we're going to integrate this with respect to x. Which is what the dx means. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the second one because we haven't started with the second method for a long time. Alright, so for my second method, I'm going to use a very special way of substitution, which is called the Weierstrass substitution. Hopefully you are familiar with that. If not, then here we go. So to be able to solve a rational function, especially with trigonometric functions, this method is very helpful. And what we basically do is we replace tangent x over 2 with z. So we set z equal to tangent x over 2. And from here, we find the other trigonometric functions. Obviously, we don't have that, but notice how this is going to proceed, because that's going to be interesting. Now, from here, we basically get x over 2 equals 10 inverse of z. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2, and x becomes 2 times 10 inverse of z. You could put z in parentheses and x over 2 as well if you want. Some people get confused. That shouldn't be confusing, but anyways, we did. And then from x, we're going to actually find dx. How do you find dx? By differentiating, obviously. The derivative of 10 inverse of z is 1 over 1 plus z squared. But instead of z prime, which comes from the chain rule, we're just going to use dz. So this is going to be... 2dz over 1 plus z squared, which is nice, right? And then, by replacing z with tangent x over 2, we also get an interesting situation, because we can draw a right triangle that satisfies this, right? So, if x over 2 is z, then how do we find tangent x from here? We can kind of cut that in half like this, not in half, but to make an isosceles triangle. And then from here, we're going to be able to find x because this is also going to be x over 2. But this is going to have some complications. So instead, let's do this. Let's you find tangent x using the double angle formula from here. Remember, tangent 2 alpha is 2 tan alpha divided by 1 minus 10 squared alpha. So now tangent x, which happens to be 2 times x over 2, can be written as 2 tangent x over 2 divided by 1 minus tangent squared x over 2. In this case, alpha is x over 2. And we do know that tangent x over 2 is z. So from here, tangent x is going to be 2z over 1 minus z squared. Makes, makes sense? Tangent x over 2 was replaced with z. So that's going to be helpful. And... Obviously, this is going to be helpful as well. All right. Now, let's see what we can do with this. Obviously, in our expression, we don't have tangent x. We have cosine x. How do you find cosine x from here? This is when we draw the right triangle. Let's do it. So this time, our triangle is going to have x as our acute angle. And even if x isn't acute, this is going to be fine. Uh-oh. I don't want that to disappear. I was just trying to erase this little piece. So, if tangent x is equal to 2z over 1 minus z squared, then we can kind of place the lengths as follows. And from here, we're going to find the hypotenuse. But to keep a long story short, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse should be 1 plus z squared. Make sense? You can check it out. And from here, we're going to find cosine x. Cosine x is going to be 1 minus z squared divided by 1 plus z squared. That's something we're going to need in our expression. Now, let's go ahead and use all of these things to simplify dx over 1 plus cosine x. Awesome. Now, we're going to replace dx with 2dz over 1 plus z squared. Okay? 2dz over 1 plus z squared. And 1 plus cosine. Cosine is going to be replaced with 1 minus z squared over 1 plus z squared, and we're just going to integrate this. But let's go ahead and simplify the inside first. Notice that we can make a common denominator at the bottom. So when we add 1 plus z squared and 1 minus z squared and divide it by 1 plus z squared, something super duper interesting happens because 
1 plus z squared cancels out. z squared and z squared cancels out, and we have 1 plus 1, which cancels out with the 2. Uh-oh, everything canceled out. This is awesome. We end up with the integral of dz, which is z plus a constant c. But what is z? Okay, back to basics. z is tan x over 2. So the answer is actually tangent x over 2 plus c. This is kind of like the best case scenario for wire stress substitution. It's kind of hard to say for me. But uh, as you can see, the answer is fairly simple. And this brings us to the first method because remember, we did the second method first. So now we're going to do the first method second. Does that make it the second method? No. The first method is still the first method. So with the first method, to be able to integrate 1 over 1 plus cosine, I'm going to use double angle formulas because why not? Well, there's a good reason behind it. 1 plus cosine or 1 minus cosine almost always calls for double angle. And if you ever see something like 1 minus cosine over 1 plus cosine or anything that looks like it, always use the double angle. At least give it a try because guess what? You're going to get a really nice simple expression. And this could be integrated the same way by using the double angle formulas. Try it out and let us know. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the angle, the double angle formula for what is cosine 2 theta. There are three formulas. Remember the main one is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And then by using the Pythagorean theorem, we get two other. 2 cosine squared minus 1 and 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now, how do I remember these formulas? I kind of memorized them, I think, when I was in ninth or 10th grade. And then since then, I've been using it. So I didn't forget. Anyways, you can go ahead and now use it, but this time the 2 theta is going to be x, meaning that your theta is going to be x over 2. Make sense? So 1 over 1 plus cosine x can be written as 1 over 1 plus. Which one should I use? I want to use the one with the negative 1 because the ones are going to cancel out. You see what I'm saying? So just replace cosine x with 2 cosine squared x over 2 plus 1. We kind of need a longer line for this. And then the 1 cancels out, and we end up with 1 over 2 cosine squared, which can be written as secant squared x over 2 over 2, or 1 half times that, right? Now we're going to go ahead and integrate this, right? Because that's what our expression was. And of course, there's a dx. Don't forget the dx. That's a big deal. Now, how do you integrate secant squared? First of all, let's go ahead and take out this 1 half which is kind of annoying, right? And then think about the integral of secant squared. You hopefully know that if you differentiate tangent, you get 1 plus tangent squared or just secant squared. So the integral of secant squared is actually tangent. Wow, that's simple, right? So if you integrate secant squared, you're going to get tangent. x over 2 is the argument. But if you differentiate this to go back, then you're going to get an extra 1 half from chain rule, which you have to make up. So this is actually 2 times tangent x over 2, so that the, the 1 half is offset with the 2. But there is a 1 half sitting outside, which is waiting to be multiplied by 2. And guess what? That's going to cancel out. And of course, don't forget the infamous constant c. And when you simplify this, you're going to get the exact same answer. So the integral of dx over 1 plus cosine x is tangent x over 2. This probably inspired the wire stress substitution. I'm guessing, I don't know how he came about it, you know, the great mathematician. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.